Hello everyone, my name is Allie and today I'm going to be doing a Top 5 Wednesday video. Today's Top 5 Wednesday topic is bookish things that you are Grinch about. I really liked this topic and I found it really unique and interesting because even though we all love reading, there's always some things about books or about the writing in books that just kind of irk us a little bit. So today I have five of my most Grinch's irksome things about books. And I'm going to be going from my least irksome to my most irksome. So number five on my list is shortened front covers. So an example of this is on The Martian by Andy Weir. And you can see here that they have like, they shorten the front cover just enough. So it has like this little tab so you can open up to the this inside cover which has like the other authors or magazines or newspapers say this about this book or whatever. And this irritates me so much because one, I'm a reader and I've been a reader my entire life. I know how to flip a page. I don't need assistance by making it shorter and making a tab out of it. I can manage. And also it bothers me because when you go to slide this into your bookshelf, it tends to get caught easier and like folds the cover back. And I've had books that I've ruined because I literally fold the cover in half. And I'm not one who has to have pristine books. I tab my books, I write my books. Like I don't mind if my books look used because I use them. But it does bother me when I com like completely damage a book by folding a cover in half. That does bother me. And it happens all the time with books like this. So in order to avoid that with this book, instead of sliding it into a bookshelf like this, I tend to put it on my bookshelf like this and do it in my um, like stacks that go horizontally instead of vertically to avoid damaging them because the stupid little flap in the front is a dumb idea and I don't understand why they have to do it. <laughs> my number four problem is one that doesn't happen very often but it does happen in my like larger meaning like the actual book size is bigger so it happens a lot more if I purchase any children's like picture books and what I mean and the problem is is that the dust jacket doesn't line up on the spine the way it should. So my example for this is my copy of a, The Sleeper in the Spindle by Neil Gaiman. This is a small picture book that he has done and it doesn't line up on the spine. So you can see that the title here is off center and it's like kind of moving more towards the back side of the book so that when it's sitting on your shelf, you can't read what the book is. And it bothers me so much because no, like you can't refold this without causing even more damage to it. It's just something that went wrong when it was on like the line being produced in the factory and it just folded the pages like slightly wrong. But it just, oh, it always bothers me. This is such a beautiful book. The cover is beautiful. The illustrations on the inside are absolutely stunning. The naked cover is beautiful. Everything about it is absolute perfection except the fact that the fucking spine doesn't line up and it drives me nuts. My number three book thing that I'm a Grinch about is flowery writing that becomes overly distracting and or confusing. It, it, it's a common theme that I find in books that have flowery and very descriptive writing and it's why I have a hard time enjoying these books and there's very few authors who can manage to do the flowery and descriptive writing and do it well because I find that a lot of the times the descriptions become so overly done and so extensive that you lose track of where you were in the book. It often happens to me where I'm reading a book and then you get this super descriptive passage and then you're going back to the plot of the storyline but then I don't remember what we were doing beforehand because the description was so long and so intense that it completely pulls me out of the book. I've got two examples for this, and one of them is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. And this is a problem I've just noticed more so in general with classics, where the descriptions will be so long. Like, there are some descriptions in this book that take up pages, like literal pages. So obviously this book takes place under the sea when they're in a submarine. So a lot of the descriptions, they're just, uh, it's being described of where they're at in the ocean and the flora and the animal species that they're seeing along the way. But those descriptions will literally last four or five pages long of just like listing stuff that they see. 
But the other big problem with this book is the fact that they don't list things by saying like, oh, that's some coral or, oh, that's a shark. They'll use the biological, like scientific name for it. So instead of saying shark, they'll call it here. I had to write it down because I couldn't remember it. So, so I'm glancing to my notes here. So instead of calling it a shark, he calls it the Selichipmorpha or Selichimorpha, which I don't know what that means, so I spent more of my time Googling while reading this book than I did actually reading the book. Another example of a book that does this that, and it bothered me was The Star Touched Queen by Roshani Chachki. While the story was super interesting and I was really excited to read a book about Hindu mythology, some of the descriptions and the similes and the metaphor became so extensive that I had a hard time figuring out like what was fact and what was being used as like an example as a simile or a metaphor. So I got really lost in actually what was going on in the plot and what she was trying to accomplish and where they even were. There are many times where I thought they were in location A and then all of a sudden they're in location B and I don't know where, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how they went from A to B and I missed that even though I read every word. So I find that books like this become overly descriptive and become so obsessed with being beautiful and having some, you know, metaphorically beautiful thing to say that the actual story and what I find is the most important part of the book gets horribly lost. So number two, which used to be my number one until fairly recently, but I'll get to that, is Du Sex Machina. And I don't have an actual example for a book like this because if I brought an example or I said an example of this, it would very much spoil the ending to these books and I don't want to do that. But odds are if you read the genre, you will know what I'm talking about. But if you don't know, again, I'm just going to read a definition here for you. Deus Ex Machina is when an unexpected power or event saving a seemingly hopeless situation, especially as a contrived plot device in a play or novel. So what I've been seeing, and this happens a lot in the thriller genre, where for like 97% of the book, I'm really enjoying it. The mystery is intriguing. The characters are great. The plot is great. Everything's fine. Everything's dandy. But then when you come to the ending of the book and how most thrillers end with some kind of a twist, this twist all of a sudden becomes supernatural or fantastical, while for the rest of the 97% of this book, there has been zero mention of this world having anything to do with the fantastical or the supernatural. I like books that have fantastical and supernatural elements, but I like to know about that this world has that tendency before we get to the ending. But these books, they use the supernatural twist as the explanation for everything that's been going on in this book, even though there has been zero talk about this book having any sort of inclination towards the supernatural or fantastic. So when I see an author do this, this makes me think that this author wrote this book without having an ending in mind and not having the twist in mind. And then they wrote themselves into a hole and then didn't know how to get themselves out of it. They didn't know how to make a twist that was interesting enough because they wrote themselves into this hole. So instead of revising and editing their story to get themselves out of this and to find a better ending, they take the lazy way out and just say, oh, a ghost was responsible for this, or oh, there is this fantastical, oh, a demon was responsible for this, and do the do sex machina, like, cheat. And it, I find it lazy, I find it boring, and I find that you're cheating your readers. Your reader has put so much time and money into purchasing this book and taking the time to read this book, and then you take the lazy way out of your ending. And it drives me nuts, and it happens way more than it should. So if you do want some of my examples, message me, and I'll you know, send you some of my examples and books to avoid that do this, but it is one of my most hated tropes or writing faux pas. It just, ugh, it is something that if, mm, basically if an author does this, I will never read any of their books afterwards because I just, I can't stand it. So my number one bookish thing that I am a Grinch about is misleading synopses. In my experience, the biggest culprit of this is YA fantasy. The synopsis will promise everything that I love about a fantasy book. It'll print, obviously it'll promise fantasy, it'll promise monsters, it'll promise 
demons, it'll promise bloodthirsty villains, it'll promise political intrigue, all these things that I love to have in my fantasy books. But instead of the majority of the book following these things that they promised me, it's following something that was not in the synopsis at all or had a very small segment of the synopsis, which is the romance. I don't mind romance. I like to read romance. But I like to know when I'm getting into a book that has the majority of its plot being a romance. Because I have to be in a certain mood, in a certain place to want to and enjoy a romance novel. So when I pick up a fantasy book, I'm not expecting or in the mood to read a romance. I'm in the mood to read a fantasy book. It drives me crazy when the synopsis promises like 80% of the book of all these great things that fantasy does and that 20% of the book like, oh, there might be this romance that happens over here. That's fine. But it's when they promise that and then they flip those percentages. So 80% of the book is about the romance and then you get 20% of everything else that you wanted to read about. That's what really bothers me. And again, I put my money and my time into reading this book and then I get something I wasn't promised. So I have a few books that do this. It happened in this book, it happens in this book, and it happens in this book. And that's just a few. There are many, many more. But the one that does this the worst, and I think is the biggest culprit of it because it keeps happening over and over and over again in all of her series, is Cassandra Clare's books. These books were pitched to me as these really great urban fantasy that has demon hunting, magic, and political intrigue, really great character dynamic, warlocks and monsters and demons and just all of this wonderful stuff that sounded so interesting and so good and unique. Because while fantasy and urban fantasy have done all these things, it's very rare you find them all in one book together. So I thought this was going to be like the epitome of urban fantasy. I got none of what I was promised, or very little of what I was promised. There is way more page time in this book dedicated to the romances of Jason Clary, Simon and Isabella, Alec and Magnus, and all these different people. There are way more pages dedicated to them and their relationship problems then there are dedicated to the actual, what I thought was going to be the main plot of this book, which is a war going on between demons versus shadow hunters and trying to keep the shadow hunter and demon world secret from humans. Like, that's what I thought this book was going to be about. But way more of the pages are dedicated to teenage romance drama. And that's not what I got into reading fantasy for. And it's not that you just get, have to go through one of these romances. It's not like we're only looking at Jason Clary's. You get four or five other romances that they have the same problems and you have to read about the same problems over and over and over again. And it just becomes dull and boring because I've seen it all before. In the same book 20 pages ago when we talked about Clary and Jace's trust issues, now I have to talk about Simon and Isabella's trust issues. Like, ugh, it obviously bothers me. So while I'm having to trudge through all this romantic drama, this like super amazing urban fantasy, incredible stories like dangling in the background, just like, oh, I'm here, I'm kind of here, like, you're kind of getting some tidbits about this awesome story, but let's go back to the romance you don't give a shit about. Not only is it more of a story about romance, but you're constantly teased with all the stuff that you wanted from the synopsis throughout the entire book. It really damaged how I can look and enjoy Cassandra Clare's books, because I just, I just can't. Even when I was reading her Infernal Devices series, I enjoyed much more, and I... I gave a much higher rating than I gave these books, but they're still in the back of my head going on, but all this stuff that could be happening that's not happening that we'd much rather prefer over the romance and the love triangles and all that kind of crap. So I don't think I can continue to read anything by Cassandra Clare because this trope, the, or whatever you want to call it, has just consumed her work and I can't look at it any other way. So that was my rather heated t discussion about the book tropes or book things that I am a Grinch about. If you agreed with me on any of these topics or disagreed with me on any of these topics, please let me know down in the comments. And if you did this top five Wednesday topic as well, please link your video down below or your blog post or whatever, and I would be more than happy to look into it. But that's all that I have for today. So until next time, happy reading, and I'll see you all then.